the flag drops and we are away racing and it's Philip McCallan who's set us in motion as well 11 times TT winner doing the official duties of starter and there goes John McGuinness away under the footbridge and now it's Ryan Farquhar and good to see Ryan back here after being forced to sit out the whole of the TT apart from the senior race last year after a crash in practice Ryan at two is away and here's number three Guy Martin Five podiums in super sport races here at the TT for Guy Martin on the Tyco Suzuki. Next up is number four, Cameron Donald. Looking very determined on the first of the Wilson Craig Hondas. Second place on Saturday for Cameron. And now last year's winner, here comes Bruce. From then just lifting a couple of times as he goes down Glen Crutchley Road in front of us here. Bruce, a winner last year, his eighth TT win. This is Cameron Dondo straining through the bottom of Bray Hill. He's another one. Just, you just never know if he's on form, he can win. He's been talking about retiring, but he's riding extremely well. Another one had a good Northwest 200. He seems very happy with the Wilson Craig team. He does. That's McGuinness, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that is McGuinness. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. And comes. that's going on towards Glenvan. I think you'll actually see the camps on the left. Yep. One coming up to pause, Balascari, of course we've named it, but there we go, Michael Dunlop, lap record holder, what can he do today, over the top of us, he's well close to those curves, as he charges down, of course the R6 Yamaha, he switched from the Suzuki, he's close to that other curve as well Steve, oh, absolutely nailed in the bottom there, yeah, This is uh, Ian Hutchinson. And I don't think that's that will be Gary Johnson, Johnson yeah. and he's, he's already catching Hutchinson. He is, yeah, yep. Gary Johnson catching, and uh, of course he was the winner of uh, last year, the Super Sport class. This is uh, Guy Martin on the JSXR 600, that's Cronky Body Straight. We're riding with Guy Martin now. I'm not sure if that sounds it right. Do, it just doesn't, and it doesn't look quick to me, I've got to say. That's, what sort of luck is he having? Issues there with Guy Martin already. Yep, drink waters. Good crowds, look at them, basking in the sunshine. You can see, yeah, he's being caught easy. He is, definitely. It? That's Cam Donald. He should be on the Wilson Craig Honda, and that's not 10 seconds, Steve. No, not at all. Leaderboard then looks like this. Michael Dunlop leads William Dunlop by a quarter of a second. In third place, Gary Johnson, who is one and a half seconds down on William Dunlop. In fourth, number four, Cameron Donald, who is 0.6 of a second down on Johnson. In fifth, number five, Bruce Anstey, who is a fifth of a second down on Donald. And in sixth place, Ryan Farquhar, who is half a second back on Anstey. We're on board with Gary Johnson looking back now. Yep. This is rear facing from uh, Gary Johnson's Lynx lifting CBR 600. That's going on to Cronky Body. Used to be bumpy in my day, smoothed out a great deal. And there he is passing Hutchie, number six on the Swan Yamaha. Yeah, Hutchie's just out of sorts, coming back from big injury, not ridden for, well, over a year before he uh, he went to the northwest a few weeks back. Can't be comfortable. We, yep. we know that leg is nowhere near healed, having injured it again in the winter. That's two broken legs in two years. Yep. This is number 14, Ian Locker on the Kawasaki. And that's Phil Grieber. That's Dunlop yeah. behind him, That's isn't William it? Dunlop, yeah. yeah, and that's not 10 seconds either. No, we would have expected that. William yeah. Dunlop riding extremely well. He's still knocked around. He had quite a big crash, actually, at the Northwest 200. He's still knocked around, but riding extremely well. And going to give his brother, in fact, he's very close to his brother. Yep. Times. This is between the two Dunlops at the moment. Yep, Michael leading just from William. Yeah. Oh, that's Ian Lockett. We didn't think that would take too long. No, not at all. And, of course, William Dunlop not, not on a TT yet. When will that come? McGuinness, Sulby, Crossroads. And this is Cameron Donald. Yeah, and this... I'm interested to see how quick the Suzuki is compared... Uh, yeah. yeah. Something we'll seriously wrong. There is. There's something wrong with that Taiko Suzuki of Guy Martin.
Phillips there is that uh, day glow yellow helmet there of Cameron Donald, number four. Two wins to his credit, Cameron Donald, I'm talking about. But this man, John McGuinness, he's, uh, he's not as fast. Of course, the Dunlop boys are getting away from him a bit. Yep, they are, and I, t I can tell you that there's a less than a second between Michael Dunlop leading this race and his brother William in second. Through the hairpin. Nice and neat. Course, yeah, nice and tidy, but then Mr McGuinness always is. On board with Michael Dunlop, number nine, R6 Yamaha. And that's uh, uh, Dan, Dan Neen. Neen. Dan Neen. Yep, it is. Dan Neen, the local boy from Braddon in the Alaman. And Banaf is a Dunlop 1 2, and it's still Michael leading from William by nearly two seconds. 1.9 the split between the two of them. Michael leading from William at Banaf. Cameron Donald in third place ahead of Gary Johnson now. Gary Johnson in fourth. Bruce Anstey in fifth. Bruce Anstey wheeling through there on the Paget Honda. Check it out, weaving around everywhere, focus in his eyes. This is number 13, this is James Hilly on his Kawasaki bid, hunted down now by William Dunlop. They set off 20 seconds apart. Looking back from William Dunlop, and they had all sorts of problems. Remember last year with engines blowing up and everything else, they seem to have got that sorted out. Uh, it, uh, the Wilson Craig team have got reliability, or well, that's what they're looking for. Look at the sea there, blue sea right behind you. Yeah, that's going up towards the waterworks and uh, up towards the gooseneck, and that's now William Dunlop in front of James. And this is Danny number eight. And this is at Conquer Trees, and this is oh. about 145 miles an hour. Look at that. Take a look at that showboating there. Really, number eight, Dan Dean, terrific style there. He's a brave lad. So here we come, Let's see what the difference is. It is Michael Dunlop, we think, leading from Cameron Donald. What is the advantage up at the bungalow now? And again, the crowd's all basking in the sunshine. And uh, there it is, eight-second lead, Michael Dunlop over Cameron Donald. Yeah, we've got to wait for William Dunlop to come through at number 15. Terrific stuff there, Michael. Big lad charging up the hill, and here comes his brother. This uh, man, William Dunlop, going so fast on this little bike. William says he's still got to, uh, stuff to learn, even though he's the elder brother of the two, he says he's still got to learn from younger brother Michael. William's at the bungalow now, and in fact, it's Cameron Donald has gone into second place with William relegated to third. Michael leads Cameron Donald at the bungalow on lap one by eight seconds in third place now. It's number 15, William Dunlop, point two of the second behind Cameron Donald with Gary Johnson in fourth place, Bruce Anstey in fifth, and the top two on the road are already coming down the mountain. Now, that, now that, there's something wrong with that Suzuki. Yeah, very much so. John McGuinness, the leader on the road. John on corrected time at Ramsey had slipped down to eighth place from seventh again. Helen Hilliers in the Padgett's colours, racing for Padgett's in the uh, 600. Yeah, this is Michael Dunlop out of Governor's Dip onto the Glen Crutchery Road. And there is Michael. There's Michael going through with a furious waving of the left fist as he passed the pits. Whatever it is, Michael has done exceptionally well because he is now 10 seconds ahead of Cameron Donald. Guy Martin is coming into the pits. Martin is into the pits. Ian Hutchinson has gone through. Let's check downstairs with Chris Kinley. The mechanics are having a little look round it now. He just gives a shake of the head. Guy Martin is a retirement. Guy Martin is a retirement. So back on the leaderboard we had Michael Dunlop with a 10 second lead over number four Cameron Donald in third place is number 15 William Dunlop just 0.3 of a second behind Cameron and William has a lead of just under a second over number seven Gary Johnson massive crowd here today and these fantastic there Ryan Farquhar on the number two Kawasaki very stylish out of there yeah in a fight for sixth place now with Dan Neen, the local boy. We're riding with Gary Johnson, looking back. Amazingly hot pace being set by Michael Dunlop at the lap. He now leads his brother William by 17 seconds. While on earth would their dad, Robert, the five-time TT winner, be making of this? His two lads dominating the leaderboard. And uh, are we going to see a pole? I think we're going to see here because Michael has made up a fair amount of time. Yeah, Michael set off number nine and Gary Johnson seven, so 20 seconds apart. That's one fast Yamaha, isn't it? it the is. R6 there is absolutely right. flying, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it really is. This is uh, Quarry Benz now. Look how much road he's using, using. I mean, we're talking about the TT riding 80%. There's no 80% there. There's it like 99% there from Michael Dunlop, number nine. This will be Anstey, I think, through Ramsey Airpin. It is on the Padgett's Honda. In fifth position. 
Bruce Anstey's quick this lap, number five. Has he made inroads into Cameron Donald? I think he has. Up and under the trees there, watching out for all the flies and everything else. Awkward with the sunlight there, James. Yep. Yeah, you can just see what they're going through. All of us, all of dark. Oh, that's it. He takes a tear off off just to get the. And this is Conquer Trees. This is the race leader, number nine. Yeah, look at those bikes working and the heat haze from the exhaust pipe there. Number seven, Gary Johnson. Links lifting, Honda there. And look at it wriggling around underneath him and he's fighting it all the way. William Dunlop has been relegated now to third place. At the second place is Gary Johnson, who is that 20 seconds down on the race leader, Michael Dunlop. But now in third place is number 15, William Dunlop, who's one and a half seconds down on Gary Johnson. Then we have in fourth place, Cameron Donald, number four. And he's only one second down on William Dunlop. We're with William Dunlop passing Hachi number six on the Swan Yamaha. Yep, and that's just an indication of... Uh... Just how much uh, Ian Hutchinson's struggling. Can't now, this is the split. William Dunlop now at the bungalow with Donald. This is about for fourth, and I can third, tell you. Yeah, third and fourth. Yep. And there's been a change again, a change in the order, because Cameron is now back into third place, and William Dunlop is now down to fourth. So more drama in the Supersport 600 race and with pit stops beckoning. But at the bungalow, Michael Dunlop with a 20 second lead over Gary Johnson. Gary was three seconds ahead of now number four. Cameron Donald has moved back up and William Dunlop has slipped back to fourth place, a second behind Cameron Donald. And now he's got Bruce Anstey snapping at his ankle. So although it's Michael who's stamping his presence on the leaderboard right at the very top, it's all to play for for the remaining places as they come into the pits. We'll join Chris Kinley. And there is Cameron Donald. He's here now as well. Cameron's a little bit further down from us on the number four machine. And looks like Bruce Anstey next it is. Bruce is about three quarters of the way up. John's put a new visor on. And there, Bruce, oh yeah, nice and steady into the old stop box and out of that bit and into the Paget's box and he's away. Ryan's in, we've got Cameron in, we've got John in, he's just about to leave us now, but it's Mickey D we've got to look at. Here's Bruce Anstey. Bruce, no problems in the first pit stop. So Gary Johnson, fuel cap on, yeah, good stuff, boys. He go turns the thing in, and Gary and Michael are going to leave together. But Michael's machine, oh, she's not looking... Oh, there she go, that could be a bit of seconds lost, but the lead he had at the bungalow was 21 seconds, so that could change. Williams here, let's have a look down at fourth, we heard. Last we checked, we'll get an update on that. William Dunlop confirmed in third place. In fourth, it was Bruce Anstey, and Cameron had actually dropped down to fifth place coming into the pit stop. Let's just have a look exactly where they are as they head down the hill and it is confirmation two of four they're starting three now it's a 21 second lead that Michael Dunlop has over Johnson William Dunlop in third John McGuinness that's him through Appledean yeah seventh at the end of lap two bomb board now with Bruce Anstey he's actually passed Donald now for fourth he is he's on a real charge he's a New Zealander Gary Johnson through Milkreesfield, that's uh, Balagarieri going down towards Crosby, yep. and that's Michael Dunlop chasing him, so Michael Dunlop still leading the race. That's the back of Ryan's Kawasaki, this is from Cam Donald's Honda. You can see how hard it is to pass here, look at this, now we're on board, you can see the revs, you can see the speed, fourth gear section Pump through here, up. yeah, and this is coming up onto Kong the body. Cam Donald's Honda is a little bit quicker than Ralph Rappas Kawasaki. Yeah, and uh, look at the speed building. This is with 600cc machine here. Look at that, 173.5, 175 miles an hour. He just pins it through there. <laughs> 160 round drink quarters at the end of Cronky Body. This is the uh, this really good shots. Number nine, Michael Dunlop, race leader. Riding uh, with him. This is Apple Dean section. So, Michael Dunlop still leads this race. He's got two wins to his credit. Can he make it three? Oh, not with that, he can't. That's gone. Yeah, that's slow. Lost a cylinder or something, hasn't yep. it? Yep. Oh, no, what bad luck, Michael Dunlop. He switched back to the R6 Yamaha, and it's just it a brand-new bike as well. That's not as sick, is it? It's not going to go a lot further. It's slow, and it's sounding rough. He will be oh, no, absolutely that's distraught. That's his brother, William Dunlop. He's still going strong. This is uh, Glenvine area, and this is it. Michael Dunlop's out. That's just after Ballasper. Job's over. Definitely lost a cylinder or something. There. Yeah, it's a bit... That's, that's, ruined, ruined, the, that's ruined the picnic. Oh. 
How disappointing for him. So he's still got those two wins. I thought it was going to be three today, but it's all going on here. Cam Donald. Yeah. Bruce Ansett riding with him. He's just getting faster and faster. Bruce is slowly waking up to this. Now then, Michael Dunlop out. What does that mean? That means probably Johnson's leading. Yeah, he will be, won't he? Gary Johnson, so again, he had a win last year. Can he make it another one there? It's the times between Johnson and Donald. Yep. Uh, we can now give the leaderboard. Gary Johnson leads Cameron Donald by three and a half seconds. In third place, Bruce Anstey, who was one second down on Donald. And in fourth, William Dunlop, 1.3 seconds down on Anstey. Look at the focus there from Ryan Farquhar, the Irishman. Look at that throttle really pinned through Just there. Now. Yeah. And the bike squirrelling around. Mon McGuinness over the top he comes, front wheel up in the air, but he's leading on the road, but he certainly isn't leading the race. And this is still going on. Not much between those bikes. We thought Cam Donalds was faster, but slips through. Look at that, Ryan Farquhar has a good across. look across. Excuse me, Sonny, I want to come through there, but he's not allowing it because Cameron Donald, the Australian, says, no way, sunshine. Yep, and that's Cam Donald still in front because he's set off 20 seconds apart. This is William Dunlop now going down into Parliament Square. Now he's, he's fourth, but only 3.6 seconds behind Bruce Anstey in third. Trying everything he knows. Here is Brucey. Yep. Paget's machine. Clive Paget back in the pits there. You'll know that the bike will be running good. They put such a good motorcycle underneath there. Right? Absolutely. You know, they've had uh, 23, uh, 23 races. They've had 18 and 19 finishes. They haven't had any bluff ever of the Paget's team. Now, this is the clock. Don now, this is the battle for second place. And Anstey's got it at the bungalow. Yeah, he has. Look at that. Point three two. Bruce Anstey is really on the charge. Flying Kiwi has woken up. Bruce Anstey, number five, is in second place at the bungalow. And Gary Johnson has less of a lead now than he did when he passed Roy Moore at Ramsey. It's just over three seconds, 3.09 to be precise. Gary Johnson leading Bruce Anstey at the bungalow. Cameron Donald is now in third place. Only point three of a second behind Bruce Anstey, though. So these podium places still very much at the ground. In fourth place, it's still William Dunlop. Meanwhile, John McGuinness has got past Dan Neen on collected time. John McGuinness is up into fifth place with Dan Neen sixth. Now we're riding with William Dunlop. This is dropping down the nook into the slowest part of the track. This is Governor's Dip. Yellow Governor's flag Bridge. out there. Yeah, hang on. Let's have a look. Yeah, lots of waved yellow flags here. Yep, we'll flick left and then flick right again. I haven't seen anything. Well, out oh, there. there is and there, I, yeah, that, that, that will be Neen. Uh, that's got to be Dan Neen. It yeah. has to be Dan Neen. Oh, he's out. So, at the end of that three or four laps, it's a two-second advance for Johnson over Anstey. Donald is just another two seconds further back. Uh, news of Dan Neen, by the way, is that he came off at Governors with minor back injuries and has been taken to hospital. Dan Neen on lap two off at Governors with minor back injuries. cover the first three starting the final lap and there is John McGuinness now he's actually gone back up into fifth that's confirmed that that was Dan Neen that crashed and he's out he's got minor back injuries but okay so John McGuinness has moved back up to fifth Gary Johnson he leads this race but it's, uh, it's closing up all the time Steve has Bruce got enough time in the final lap of the mountain course 37 and three quarter miles to continue the way he's catching up Gary Johnson but Gary Johnson leading by 2.06 seconds over number five, Bruce Anstey. Through Kirk Michael, it's so fast through here, even the riders think it, let alone us. Here you go, and you can see how fast, 170 <laughs> miles an hour. Houses, walls, trees, lampposts, and using up, uh, even the, using the double yellow lines there, full throttle. Exactly, just gonna say full throttle. You know, we're now out towards a wren, cull and jumps. Get it straightened up for that one. Yep. So, Brucey is uh, still on the charge. Uh, this is James Hillier chasing Dan Stewart. This is number seven. The race leader just by about a second. And it is so close at the front. Gaz Johnson just going into Ramsey. This will be Cam Donald on the mountain. And it's, uh, this is so close. Riding with him and it is screaming. 
Absolutely, about what 16,000 RPM these things. Yeah, over the railway tram lines they go. Down on the throttle. Yep, straight away, shifting as quick as he can. Come up to the highest part of the circuit here, up towards Snaefell, Halewoods Heights. We come to. Yep, this is Bruce Anstey. He, he's having a real go at this. Yeah, and you know Bruce Anstey. He just gets faster and faster as the race goes on. He's good over the mountain section, but then so's Johnson for that matter. Yep. Gary Johnson at the bungalow, which is just where he's coming. He's losing time. He's lost time on the mountain climb to that man. Could it be fuel? Don't know. It's early in the lap for that, I've got to say. Now, this is the former race that he's, we think by the time he gets to the bungalow, he's going to have lost that lead to Bruce Anstead. Well, I hope he's uh, not run out of fuel. That wouldn't be much luck. He's tight on fuel, we know, with these machines. Let's have a listen. And he's dropped to third. He's actually dropped behind Anstey and Donald. OK, so it's now all about Cameron Donald and Bruce Anstey and the run down to the line, and there is Cameron Donald. And I can tell you that Cameron Donald, I think, is actually almost catching Anstey for the win now. News of Ryan Farquhar is that he's out of fuel at Craig Nibar. So the drama keeps on coming. It is the run to the line now. That, that, that's actually Gary Johnson, and he's not going quick. That isn't quick. I'll tell you now, I think he is running out of petrol. I think you were right. Yeah. That's slow. Yeah, not that's good stopped. news. That's two off. Listen, he stopped. He's yeah. coasting. He's pulled Coming the clutch. Time post corner. Yeah, yeah. He's out of it. He's out. So it is Cam Donald and Bruce Anstey. Uh, this is Bruce. This is Bruce going down into the nook now. It's New Zealand versus Australia at the moment. Here we go. We're on board with Cameron Donald. It's going to be about 10 seconds the gap before he comes up. Who has got this one? He, this is. I, I can't even call it. Cameron Donald started 10 seconds ahead of Bruce Anstey. Gary Johnson is now uh, six seconds down, so clearly some difficulties for Gary. And now can Bruce get here in less than 10 seconds? Five seconds have gone. We look down Glen Tree Road. Here comes Anstey now, crosses the line. I think it's Anstey's. I think it's Anstey who's done it. We wait for confirmation. It is. It's Anstey who's done it by less than a second. Less than a second after over 150 miles of racing. Would you believe it? And Gary Johnson has just completed pushing in with applause round pit lane. Clearly some problems on the second half of the final lap. We wait to find out exactly what the problem was there. Well, and Bruce, did you know it was as close as it was? I think 0.7 between yourself and Kami in the end there. Did you get a sense of that? Yeah, because so the mountain was getting plus zero, zero, plus zero, zero. So we are neck and neck. So down the mountain, I just gave it everything I got just to come out onto the last straight to, to run out of fuel. Oh, God, no. It's like, but I managed to do it, so really over the moon. Again, my first lap was too slow. I was really peed off about that, so I just put my head down, went for it for the last three laps. Cameron, that was just incredibly close and very exciting for us. How did it feel for you out there? Yeah, it was exciting too. And I, look, I really enjoy riding this motorcycle. It's um, We learned a lot in that race as well. We did struggle for a lack of practice time, and I'm sure with the knowledge I've got from that race, we can definitely go quicker on Wednesday conditions uh, all being well but um, I knew it was coming down to the uh, you know it was going to be nothing at the finish but uh, so we just just missed out but um, you know no shame finishing second to Bruce I'm quite proud of the result. Congratulations mate your first podium how's it feel? Yeah no, pretty nice wrong possession but <laughs> yeah no I'm really happy with it just thanks to the team all the boys been bait was brilliant just just didn't ride it hard enough. First few laps were interesting. Yourself and Michael were involved in quite a quite a battle. Yeah, and I felt pretty good first couple of laps, and then just started to go off, and nothing, nothing I can say, nothing to do with the bike, just just myself. So, you know, we will work hard for for the second race. We'll have a good crack at it. Hey, you have said that when you beat Michael, he sulks for a couple of weeks and he won't talk to you. Are you looking forward to that? <laughs> I'm going to have to move house. That's the same. I got a good TT. I'm going to have to move out. <laughs> So it's win number nine for New Zealand's Bruce Anstey, ten years after his first TT victory. And great celebrations for himself, Cameron Donald and William Dunlop. Unfortunately, a bit of a dib-dib drenched for the scout. It was, in fact, the second closest finish in TT history. Less than a second separating Bruce Anstey, Cameron Donald and Gary Johnson at Ramsey. Anstey held his nerve to finish first. Cameron Donald took second. And after Gary Johnson ran out of fuel, William Dunlop snuck his way into third place. What a dunk.